my advice to the next generation girls is do the best you can and follow your heart. Follow your passion. This is a story about being true to yourself, however long that might take. I was born in 1950. Um, that's when my parents went to Taiwan for honeymoon. I was the eldest, and my mom always said, uh, the eldest sister is like mother. So I took care of my siblings whenever their needs are. Uh, in Taiwan, you know, the traditional family, the boy is here and the girl is here, and we were the girls. We, we have a very strict mother and very soft father. My mom is very hard on the girls and spoil the boys. My dad does incredible things. Um, that I have to tell you. He will measure our waist with a string, measure our shoes with a paper when we're sleeping, or bring, bring back home beautiful clothes. I don't know how you can find clothes fit us, but all fit. Nancy's parents originally lived in mainland China and traveled to Taiwan after their wedding. But due to the political unrest of the era, the couple was prohibited from returning home and were forced to create a life on this new island, where they neither had jobs nor spoke the language. So when we were eight or nine, we don't know much. I never was in a car before. Um, I grew up, I never see hot water coming out of the faucet. Um, we never see TVs. It was a very poor country. So maybe 5% of the kids can go to college. Despite these odds, Nancy's family included some exceptional scholars. Her father and uncle were both professors. Her mother had been a surgeon, and a slew of extended relatives achieved some of the world's superlative accomplishments. Nancy clearly had good genes. I went to the best girl high school in Taipei, and there we were trained to compete with the boys. So I study college chemistry the first year in high school and college physics the second year. Became, you know, really infatuated by chemistry and science. And the reason that is right around there, uh, we have two people uh, Taiwan got Nobel Prize, and Professor Yang and Professor Li. They were national heroes. They came to Taiwan, they were in the news. We were being taught by our professors, like, you know, it's a national pride. Nancy led a strict life, one that didn't include the typical teenage passions of the 1960s. Instead, she explored more traditional culture. I don't know anything about English and seeing those things. As instead, I'm learning Chinese opera. <laughs> And every afternoon, we were, we were learning that, very disciplined. I wasn't feel like fitting in in a lot of the same age kids. It never really bothers me that much because I always had this dream of being somebody special. Nancy attended Taiwan's National Tsinghua University, where she met a fellow budding scientist, Sei Wen Chang. Both received scholarships for graduate school, Nancy heading to Brown University and Sei Wen to Harvard University. They married just a few days before boarding the plane. My father was very worried about us because we don't have a lot of money. We maybe have $50 in the bank. Uh, but Sei Wen's grandmother saved all her money and put $30,000, give it to me. I took the $30,000 give it to my mom, and didn't take it with me. So I have $50 in the bag, and um, came to the US. Nancy planned to study chemistry at Brown, but during the long flight, something curious happened. She read the double helix, 
James Watson's seminal book on his discovery of the structure of DNA. And then I, when I read Double Helix, that book was so beautifully written. I made up of my mind that said, I want to go into medical school. Moving to the United States was a huge adjustment for Nancy and Se Wen, who were used to hard work, but not the English language. In fact, the Changs were among the first international students at Harvard, where the professors demanded excellence from every student, whether they had a language barrier or not. What's more, Nancy was entirely new to the field of biology, so her first years there were exceptionally challenging. You know, I had professors give us this big stack of paper every week to read. You can't finish up, and you went to the professor, and he said to you, it's good for you, go finish. I grew up very passively, but it really takes hardship to bring the true yourself out, to speak out, to do what you want to do, um, to be the person you really become. I got my PhD. I, I, I was, uh, um, every day, probably take the first bus out, the last bus home. Uh, never took a vacation. Sewen and I will be cooking a big pasta, and we'll eat the spaghetti and miso for the whole week. And uh, weekend, we'll go to farm's market. We'll get a big treat. That would be a slice of pizza. <laughs> that was our happy times. Nancy earned her PhD in biochemistry and was so focused on her research, she hadn't thought much about how attractive a Harvard degree might be to potential employers. I was actually working on cloning. I heard about this molecule interferons, the billion dollar molecule how important it is to have this molecule, the magic molecule, to treat cancer, to treat infectious diseases. I read about Dr. Sidney Pesca, who was at Roche Pharmaceutical Company, and I wrote it to him, said, I want to be your postdoc. So I went into the industry instead of staying in academia by accident. And I wasn't sure, um, but it was follow my heart. Nancy and Sei Wen settled in Parsippany, New Jersey, and started a family. They welcomed their daughter Amy in 1980, then a second daughter, Anne, in 1985. So I was a very nervous mother, and we bought a little house in Parsippany. House, and I always thought the house was so big, and I was all alone there, a 20 some year old. So first thing I get home is I go run upstairs and downstairs to every room, make sure there were no strangers in the house. Then I lock everything up. And so it'll be just me and my daughter. <laughs> Crazy. Seiwen's job kept him away all week in Pennsylvania, and things became tough on the new family. Nancy decided to apply for a position at his startup, a lab called Centicore that was doing promising work. They don't know what they, I can do or not to do. And, and I wasn't trying to sell myself. So they gave me a bench level position. I was the first uh, group of scientists joined the company. We were less than 10 people. And I believe Santa Core, that's where really beginning to transform Nancy. I was supposed to be doing diagnostics, which I was doing. But then I was on the side of playing with my Petri dish. Nobody wanted me to do it, but I got the time I was doing it. I had a library, made a library. No one knows it, about it, but we discover new things. But I also almost got myself fired. I did have a letter from the CEO says, you're fired. So I took the letter, I went to the CEO's office. I said, Hubert, you don't understand what, what I'm trying to do. Here I'm making a library. I discovered these things. I think it's good that you're doing diagnostic, but I can, I can do these things, maybe making human therapeutics. And my boss, he listened to me. I said, I need a technician. I, instead of, I was fired, I, now I'm asking money. But I don't know what went to me. And so I said, I need a microwave oven, I need a technician, I need a room. He gave me everything. And tear the letter off, here I am, started. That really turned Santa Cor into a therapeutic company. That was the beginning of the change. As Nancy thrived at Centacore, 
she became more involved with the company's executives and her entrepreneurial instincts kicked in. From there, I got to bring new projects. So one of the projects I brought into the company was HIV. Nancy's team was the first to define and sequence the HIV genome structure and develop one of the first diagnostic assays to detect HIV infection. All those projects I was able to do because the chairman and the CEO allowed that to happen. It was not in the company's scope. So it was a wonderful time to have bosses have such an open mind. In 1986, just as Nancy's success was really taking off at Centicor, Baylor College of Medicine in Houston contacted Say Wen with a teaching position. My husband got his bug about wanting to be a professor. He always wanted to be a professor. His dream was become a professor. And so I'm the Chinese wife. You want to be a professor? We be a professor. So I came down with no jobs, just a wife. But I walk into the department and show them my credential. So I end up in a associate professor position. So we both became professors. In the Division of Molecular Virology, Nancy continued to be inspired by difficult diseases and innovative treatments. One in particular, the terrible allergies she and her husband suffered that triggered asthma attacks. So every spring, every fall, his face is all swollen. So one night in, when we were sleeping, he woke me up. He said, I have this idea about treating allergy by blocking IgE. I said, OK, get a pen and pencil. I'm the note taker. Tell me about how this works. So he drew it to me. So I'm looking at this and said, yeah, it's a damn good idea. So that became the Tanox flagship project. And uh, I quit my professorship. Because between husband and wife, who should quit? Wife. The Changs founded the biotechnology company Tanix in 1986 to address asthma, allergies, and diseases affecting the human immune system, like HIV. Nancy assumed the title president, inaugurating her new life as an entrepreneur. At Tanix, the Changs had great successes, including the discovery of what eventually became Zolaire, the first drug cleared for treating asthma related to allergies via the immune system. It was a huge breakthrough. And as they acquired the patent, Zolaire merited the couple a large fortune. Tanox went through a very hard time because, you know, we, we didn't have the VCs, but people were encouraging us. Um, we took the comp company public in year 2000. It turns out even today, it's the second largest IPO in the whole industry. The company went public at 1.25 billion. Amid heavy workload and pressure, the Changs agreed to split in 1992, and Say Wen returned to Taiwan to teach. Nancy stayed on at Tanix as president and now CEO. I believe health is a crown jewel on top of your head and only visible to the sick. I'm very fortunate uh, being in the healthcare field, um, understand the science behind it. I, my legacy, I think, is go always going to be entrepreneurship turn science to medicine, being a good person, always believing in people, somebody believing in me. So it's important that the girls today have to build confidence. And to do that, you have to follow your heart. Do the things you really wanted to do that really matters to you. Because then all the hardships become irrelevant. It's just a dream now. Thank you.